Morning, Chair. Morning, colleagues. Good morning. Chair, Mr. Cuthbert. Morning, Chairperson. Um, also, my sincere condolences to you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, Chair, Dr. Tswaku. I'm here, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. Um, Chair, we have Mr. Jacobs from the small business. You may welcome. Be. Good morning and welcome, uh, Mr. Honorable Jacobs. Chair, we have Mr. McPherson. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Chair, we have Mr. McPherson, Chair. He's on the platform. Chair, Ms. Mutahum, Chair. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. I'm present. Good morning. Chair, those are all the members we currently have on the platform, Chair. Others may join us. They may have connectivity challenges, Chair. Thank you. Can we have the agenda, please? While we're waiting for the agenda to be flighted, if I may just take this opportunity as we start this meeting, first of all, to thank the committee uh, and everyone for their messages of condolence. It is very much appreciated. Then um, I also want to say that I've been in a power outage since 20 to seven last night. So I'm uh, busy juggling devices, even my UPS has conked in, so we are hot spotting, et cetera. So my apologies if I have to switch over to another device during the course of the meeting. But you are all welcome in this meeting. Uh, we have the agenda. Can we have the apologies, uh, uh, Secretary? Um, Chair, we have two apologies. Mr. Mulder, um, who's on party business, as well as Mr. Mbuyane, who's attending a WTO meeting, Chair. Thank you very much. Can we have a move and a second for the adoption of the agenda? I don't see any hands. Chair, I'm begging to raise my hand. If permitted, I want to stand to move the adoption of the agenda. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Malamacha and then Honorable Moatse. Thank you, Chairperson. I second the move of the adoption of the agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, can we just make sure that everybody who's not been recognized to speak is muted? Um, that the agenda that has just disappeared, but it's fine. I'll go through it. I also want to request uh, to to to. Uh, maximize my bandwidth that I will switch off my video uh, now and for the rest of the meeting. If I can do so, I'm not sure. Um, so we have this morning, uh, the minister's opening, opening remarks and introduction of the NLC board. We then will have a presentation by the SIU, um, followed by a question and answer session. We'll have a short body break. And then uh, um, the minister as, and the details is comments in respect to the SIU presentation, and then a response from the NLC. And then um, that is our agenda for today. So as we uh, go into our agenda, um, we know that this is a follow-up briefing by the SIU on the investigation into allegations of maladministration and corruption at the National Lotteries Commission. At its last meeting held on the 2nd of March, 2022, this portfolio com a committee agreed that once the SIU has submitted the phase one report to the presidency, it would schedule a further briefing on the report. Therefore, the purpose of today's meeting is to see, uh, to receive a status report from the SIU on its investigations into allegations of corruption 
at the the SIU at the, uh, sorry at the, sorry. Uh, let me read that again. Therefore, the purpose of today's meeting is to receive a status report from the SIU on its investigations into allegations of corruption at the NLC. So the rationale, uh, just to remind uh, South Africa and everyone on the platform, that the rationale for these investigations were proper, were, uh, were prompted by a proclamation by the president on the 6th of November, 2020. And uh, with specific reference to the period covered by the investigation being the 1st of January, 2014 to the 6th of November, 2020. The scope of the investigation refers to maladministration in the affairs of the NLC in the relation to number one, the investment of funds of the National Lost Lottery Distribution Trust Fund established in terms of section 21 of the, uh, the, the Lotteries mm -hmm. Act, number 57 of 1997, uh, contrary to the applicable provisions of the National Lotteries Act, and then uh, the allocation of money in the fund to beneficiaries who are not entitled thereto in terms of the applicable provisions of the National of the Lotteries Act 1997. With that, I will I will then hand over to the Honourable Minister Ibrahim Patel. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and. Um... Uh, on behalf of the ministry and the department, our condolences to you and to your family. And we know this has been a, a particularly difficult period uh, for you. Recording in progress. And uh, we hope uh, with God's grace that the family uh, would be able to manage in this period. Jefferson, I'd like to thank you and the committee for the opportunity today to do a, a presentation on the work that has been done to deal with some very serious allegations that the committee has been aware of involving the National Lotteries Commission. And let me start, Chairperson, by uh, uh, introducing uh, the, uh, the DTIC team that is here with me today. It is led by Shabir Khan, the acting DG, and it, uh, the members of the DTIC team includes the uh, Chief uh, Audit Executive, uh, the uh, uh, persons responsible for the work in the branch dealing with the NLC and as well as the chief operating officer. Uh, the committee will also be, of course, addressed by the SIU and the committee knows Advocate Andy Motibi, the head of the SIU, Leonard Rejoto, the national investigating officer. Jefferson, uh, uh, if you would allow me also to introduce the board, this is the first committee meeting that the new NLC board uh, is attending. And it's, uh, it's really a pleasure uh, to introduce first the, the head of uh, the, the uh, board, and that is the chairperson of the board, Professor Barney Pitiana. Members of the committee, of course, will be uh, familiar with uh, Dr. Pitiana. Uh, he had uh, been one of the persons that had been considered by the portfolio committee at the time when the appointment of the chairperson of the board was being uh, considered. And uh, uh, Dr. Pitiana has taken uh, office now as chairperson of uh, the board, and he will be addressing the committee uh, shortly. So uh, through you, Chairperson, uh, if we can extend a warm welcome to uh, Professor Pitiana for his first board meeting. Uh, sorry, my, his first portfolio committee meeting. I'd also like to welcome uh, Dr. Cassius Lubisi. Dr. Lubisi uh, is, uh, of course, known to members uh, of Parliament, uh, having previously served also as the Secretary of Cabinet. Uh, the uh, other two excuse me, minister if we may just as you introduce uh, the board members if they may switch on their camera so that south africa can see them thank you there is the uh, dr lubisi i think for the occasion is wearing a a beautiful uh 
uh, uh, shirt and tie and uh, his uh, warm smile will no, uh, no doubt soon be filling the screen. Uh, I'd also like to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Mvulani, Precious Mvulani. Uh, Ms. Mvulani is a chartered accountant <clears throat> and, is, <clears throat> and is a new member of the board. Uh, and uh, we'll wait for a moment for uh, her camera to be switched on. There we are. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, Ms. Mvulani. And uh, finally, uh, well, not finally, I'd like next to uh, uh, introduce Ms. Beryl Ferguson. There we are, Ms. Ferguson, among uh, many governance responsibilities, is also for a period uh, served in Parliament, and I'm sure that members of Parliament would, uh, would know her. Welcome to Ms. Ferguson. And finally, I'd like to... Uh, to introduce Mr. Vili Offmeyer. And uh, I'm hoping we can see uh, Mr. Hoffmeyer, Advocate Hoffmeyer. Uh, Vili Hoffmeyer, of course, is also very well known in South Africa. There he is, suited up for the occasion, having previously uh, headed the asset forfeiture unit and um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, his role in the uh, NPA, of course, is well known. Uh, we have uh, Lionel October. Uh, he's the acting commissioner of the NLC. There we are. And uh, uh, Lionel, of course, is uh, well known to the committee, having previously been the accounting officer of the DTIC. And uh, before he completed... Um, uh, a 10 year, ten year stint as uh, uh, head of the administration of the DTIC. He had also played uh, an active role in briefing the committee on various matters. Uh, the company secretary, Ms. Nene, is also uh, present today. Uh, I don't know if we will be seeing Ms. Nene's uh, picture. So that's the, uh, the, the new board, of course, is made up of uh, Dr. Pitiana, Ms. Ferguson, Dr. Lubisi, Ms. Mvulani, and uh, Mr. Hoffmeyer. So that's the, the team of the NLC. Uh, Jefferson, uh, my uh, introductory remarks will be quite short because uh, we will be taking the committee through a bit more detail a little bit later. But if I can ask Sulu just to uh, flight uh, the uh, first uh, few slides uh, to set out uh, uh, briefly what we will be covering in the various reports today. Uh, the uh, reports will cover the journey that led to the SIU report, uh, and that will be the work that the DTIC has done, as well as the work uh, that has been done uh, by the presidency to get as to the point today. Of course, the heart of today's uh, reports will be the findings in the SIU interim report. These are uh, reports that represent the work in progress and that will be uh, presented by the SIU uh, itself. And um, it will be, uh, of course, led by Advocate Motibi. There will also be a report on the action uh, taken to date. Uh, action by the SIU, as well as the uh, action by the DTIC and the new NLC board. And finally, we'll get further action to be taken, and the NLC board chairperson will be addressing the committee. The sequence in which uh, this would be done, if we just go back to the previous slide, is we'll start with the findings in the SIU interim report in a moment then uh, highlight the journey that led to the SIU report, and that will be combined with the action taken to date. The chair of the NLC board would then address the portfolio committee, and uh, I would then conclude with uh, 10 further steps uh, that will be taken. The next slide really makes the point that the reports will show 
on the one hand, that the funds of the NLC meant for the most vulnerable communities and projects. We're talking of old age homes, of drug rehab centers, on set of centers for young children in uh, some of the most deprived communities. That these projects were cynically, uh, the monies meant for these projects were cynically and brazenly stolen by an organized syndicate of persons. But on the other hand, the reports will show that the institutions of the democracy are able when they brought into action to collect the evidence of wrong, wrongdoing and ensure that implicated persons are identified and are held to account. The next slide uh, will we'll continue by showing that the, the syndicates responsible for looting public funds were able to rely among others <clears throat> on a network of professional firms that enable the monies to be redirected and that the syndicates had sophisticated methods to cover up their actions and to deflect attention. But it will also show that there were courageous individuals ranging from whistleblowers to journalists to the investigators from the SIU and the forensic firms that they were all uh, essential to uncovering wrongdoing and in showing clearly the channels through which money flowed between the NLC and recipients, bypassing the intended community beneficiaries. Uh, and uh, when we, we have the report of the SIU, it will highlight the work to date. And as the SIU itself will indicate, that work has not been concluded. But I'd like to, to pay um, tribute to the many people who have uh, made it possible to get to the point where we are today. Uh, I think the work that has been done by Advocate Motibe and his team has been really exceptional and it's uh, uh, provided the factual basis to many of the allegations that uh, had, been, had been made previously. Uh, and just by following the money, uh, the SIU has been able to, to show South Africa uh, what has been happening uh, in uh, the ecosystem of the NLC. But I'd also like to, to recognize the, the role of uh, a small but dedicated group of journalists that have uh, blown the whistle, uh, that have uh, enabled whistleblowers themselves to, uh, to, uh, to have their, their allegations brought to the attention of uh, the public. Uh, of course, uh, the leading journalist in this regard has been Raymond Joseph, uh, and though he has worked for a, a, a small uh, media uh, uh, house, uh, the persistence, the detail of that he has been able to document has been enormously helpful. Uh, of course, there are other journalists, uh, Anton van Sale, uh, Nathan Geffen, and others who've, who've also kept the spotlight on uh, all of this. Uh, the work that uh, the forensic investigators have done, particularly the SIU, but I'd also like to, to recognize that over a number of years, various uh, uh, investigations were done, and all of that has been very helpful in bringing to the attention of the SIU the work uh, that has been uh, done thus far that has uncovered many of the things that the SIU has been able to follow up. What the reports will also show is that the level of uh, the misappropriation of monies uh, that has been uncovered to date is very, very substantial. And that the sheer weight of evidence that the SIU is collecting now uh, is so compelling uh, that uh, there's no question uh, that uh, we now have the basis to pierce the veils that uh, many have hidden behind in order to uh, ensure that they are not held to account. And so uh, really, uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, whilst we've had the, the mess in uh, uh, the NLC, we also have a new board here and the board has moved uh, with enormous speed uh, and uh, uh, particularly in the recent period since the appointment of the board and thereafter the, the board chairperson, uh, the 
the wrongdoing uh, in the NLC uh, is now uh, being brought to an end and South Africans can look forward uh, to ensuring that we have, that we are able to, uh, to celebrate uh, the institutions of the democracy working. So Chairperson, I, I'd really like to, uh, to conclude uh, on that note uh, and uh, do a more detailed uh, recalling of the journey to get us to where we are today uh, and thereafter deal with the steps that uh, will be taken now and is being taken to deal with all these, uh, these matters that have been uncovered. So thank you very much, Chairperson. May I hand back to you? Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Uh, may I now, uh, without uh, any delay, hand over to Advocate Matibi, I think, who is leading the SIU team to continue with the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, may I also at this stage, on behalf of the Special Investigating Unit, send our heartfelt condolences to you and the family. Um, the minister, Honorable Minister, uh, Good morning, uh, honorable members of the committee, uh, board members of the uh, NLC, uh, DG, uh, the other officials, <coughs> sorry, and the officials of the Special Investigating Unit. Uh, the minister, honorable minister has already uh, uh, mentioned uh, myself and Mr. Lecheto. I'll just indicate uh, quickly who else is uh, joining from the SIU team, Honorable Chair. I'm also joined by Dr. Wells, who's the Chief Legal Counsel, because there's a whole lot of legal, ma <clears throat> legal matters that uh, uh, are outcomes. And then we're also joined by uh, Mr. Khanyako, who's the spokesperson of SIU. Mr. Mashudu, who is the lead investigator, he's the forensic investigator, uh, the specialist, uh, and then Mr. Uh, Mataba is a forensic lawyer guiding the investigation towards the legal outcomes. And then we've got Advocate Fisahi, who's also uh, a member of the civil litigation team. He's the senior manager there. Because uh, there's a whole lot of matters that we are putting through civil litigation process. And we are now also joined by uh, Advocate Rulani, He's also a senior manager in the civil litigation team. Uh, Honorable Chair, without uh, wasting time, uh, we will then proceed uh, with our investigation, uh, um, our presentation. Uh, as the Honorable Minister said, uh, we are presenting today uh, uh, most of the content that uh, are in the interim report uh, uh, based on phase one. Of, uh, of our investigation. Uh, uh, Mr. Khatri, if we can just uh, slide down. Uh, right, this is just the presentation outline. As I said, uh, we, will, we will present mainly um, uh, on, the, on the four items. I'll not go uh, into detail on the legislative mandate or the, the operating model. We will go directly into the into the outcomes and the and the investigations. If we can go to the slide on outcomes, please. Right. I just want to spend a few minutes on this uh, slide, honourable chair and honourable members. Uh, you will see that uh, the investigations have reached uh, several outcomes. And as we presented before to the honorable committee, that our investigations and as, as we gather evidence and the evidence points to certain outcomes, irregularities, corruption, maladministration, we then produce uh, several outcomes. In the main, we will also uh, indicate that uh, on the left-hand side, there are processes that we are following based on the evidence that we are putting through civil litigation process to recover the monies that uh, the uh, National Lotteries Commission has, has lost 
Uh, and as we do so, there are various actions that we take towards the civil litigation and recovery. Those are uh, interim measures that we put in place to ensure that when we ultimately get the orders to recover, uh, we've got the monies you know, to, uh, to recover, such as freezing of assets and so on. So, so we, will, we will indicate that in the, in the presentation. Another important outcome, honorable chair and honorable members, is that as we investigate and we pick up that there's uh, misconduct uh, by board members, by the officials, executives, we then uh, uh, bring out the outcomes for disciplinary action to be taken. And we have done that, uh, that will also be reported on. There are various matters that uh, evidence has pointed to the Commission of Criminal Offenses. And by law, we are required when we pick up evidence pointing to criminal action to refer that to the National Prosecuting Authority. Again, the presentation will indicate the number of referrals in that regard. Uh, there are also other referrals that uh, we will be considering and making. Uh, at, the, at, at the extreme right there, although we've got SARS, logo there, but it's really just as an example, we deal with other various uh, regulatory bodies where we find that uh, there are infractions relating to income tax, we refer to SARS. In this presentation, as the minister has indicated, we have also uncovered that uh, uh, there is use or abuse of, uh, of law firms to siphon the money. Uh, so in that regard, we will be referring to the Legal Practice Council, which is the regulatory body for, for, the, for the legal practitioners. Now, at the bottom there, uh, there's a systemic recommendations process that we do. And we'll also cover that at the end of the presentation, in which case where we refer our observations and where is it that we recommend that uh, the system can be improved, be it people, process, systems, policies, and so on. Uh, uh, including where our observation inform us where we recommend that the legislation could be could be reviewed. Thank you, Mr. Lhetu. You can proceed. Uh, this takes us now to, to the investigations uh, that we have conducted, Honorable Chair. Uh, you have already indicated that this is done in terms of that proclamation. Um, I will not repeat that, uh, but suffice to say at this stage. Uh, as you can see uh, on the third line, that uh, we commenced with phase one uh, that comprised of allegations, of course, that emanated uh, uh, from the reports that we received and some of the reports that Honorable Minister has reported to. There was a report that we also looked at, at uh, that was issued by next year, uh, SAB and T. And at this stage, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, SIU has completed phase one of the investigation, which comprised of about 12 allegations uh, relating to uh, certain NPOs and uh, NPCs. Uh, this investigation has been so, so intense, massive, and complex uh, in terms of tracing, tracing the money, but the, the investigation will, will, will reveal that. Um, uh, we are just indicating there that the amount of uh, money that was involved uh, under investigation in phase one uh, was uh, about 279 uh, million. Uh, in slide number 112, we will indicate the exact amount. Uh, we say there, of course, that the evidence has indicated uh, that this money was corruptly siphoned out of NLC with the assistance of certain executives and certain board members. And the evidence that we have uncovered will be uh, indicated in the presentation. We have commenced with phase two of the investigation and that uh, investigation is comprised of about 17 matters. Uh, we commenced with that on the 1st of March and these 17 matters, honorable chair and honorable members, they increased to about 24 
Uh, and the increase is really because of continued allegations that we receive uh, uh, from various areas of the society, as the Honorable Minister has said, uh, from members of the public, uh, from media, and, and we are enjoined to then uh, investigate those, uh, uh, those matters. Uh, and then uh, there will also be phase three uh, that will be uh, in investigated, uh, uh, which comprised of about uh, 37 matters. We just did not indicate it there, uh, <clears throat> but uh, we will indicate it further on. Uh, if you slide down, Mr. Lefeto. Uh, Honorable Chair, you've already covered this, this, uh, this point that we were making here, uh, that the, the focus areas of the investigations, uh, which is the investment of funds and how the money was, uh, was allocated to various uh, MPOs. Um, and of course, uh, evidence pointing that it was siphoned uh, in a corrupt, corrupt manner to enrich uh, certain uh, officials and certain uh, board members. Uh, at this stage, Honorable Chair, uh, I'm going to hand over now to Mr. Lafetu, who will take the Honorable Committee through the investigation outcomes themselves. Uh, you will see, Honorable Chair, as you indicated, that this is a follow-up uh, report to the Honorable Committee, and we have taken the approach. If you slide down, Mr. Lafetu. Uh, we have taken the following format uh, as to, 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 to present. We have indicated to the committee uh, that this is the, uh, uh, the, the individual consent, but as we slide down, we will show that this is the NPO consent or the executive consent, and this is the information that was reported previously to the honorable committee uh, at the meeting held in the second, on the 2nd of March. And on the right hand side, we are saying, uh, uh, following the report we made in March, uh, if we say no new information, it actually in, in, in indicates that the investigation was complete and we didn't uncover any uh, information and that outcomes are now being executed. As you can see there, that the civil litigation uh, underway uh, in some instances, we will show that uh, there are disciplinary processes that we have indicated and so on. So that will be the format uh, throughout the presentation uh, that, uh, that Mr. Lekheto, uh will, uh, will present on. Mr. Lekheto, can I hand over to you at this stage, please, to take the committee through the status of the, uh, of the investigation uh, to date. Honorable Chair, thank you, Mr. Lachato, over to you, sir. Now, thank you, Advocate. And also let me pass the greeting to the Honorable Minister, the Honorable Chair, and the Honorable Members of the Committee, and also to the Board Members of NLC, and to my colleagues present, and to everybody in the platform. Uh, I will be presenting and Chair. If I start, can I ask that also I switch off my camera so that I can save the bandwidth? And Chair, as I'll be starting advocate indicated, I think just to put context into the presentation, we have divided the presentation into categories. There's a former board members, and in the former board members, we've got former board member one and former board member two. And then we've got former executive members, we've got former executive member one, former executive member two, and we've also got other officials within the department. And also at the, towards the end, now we'll also be presenting the, 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 the NTO or, or NLC. So we're gonna start with the former board member one and highlight everything that relates to the activity that took place as a result of the former board member two. So as advocate indicated, this is the, the first slide that just indicate the former board member two. And I'll just try and summarize the information that we pre previously reported on the 2nd of March, 2022. You can see that in relation to this slide, a uh, former board member two, there was NPO five, which was hijacked. 
And if we go to the next slide, it will just indicate that the part of that NPO5, which was hijacked, uh, it was paid 23 million. And out of that 23 million, uh, some of this money went over to the former board member uh, too. As you can see there, that out of that NPO5, uh, 9.2 million was transferred to, to a conveyancing attorney, which was the money was used to purchase their house for a former board member too. And slide number 13, also it shows the NPO6 as presented previously. And this NPO also was given 15 million, which was approved. And out of the 15 million, uh, 10 million was uh, transferred to a company that is known by us. And out of that 10 million, 2.5 million was transferred to a, a conveyancing attorney, which was used for the purchase of a house for a former board member too. Uh, slide number 14 also shows the NPO 7, which is the NPO 7 also, where it was also uh, 20 million was approved for this NPO. And out of the NPO, out of the 20 million, uh, the, other, the, 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 the money was paid. As a result, the, the legitimate owner of this NPO realized that money was approved for the NPO. Then they went to NLC to complain and say they realized that their NPO has been given grant, but they are not aware of it. Then as a result, instead of NP, uh, the NLC member, the executive calling the NPO, uh, the people that hijack the NPO to say they must return the money, the executive, they decided to approve further 7.8 million to this NPO. And now this money was given to the legitimate uh, owner of the NPO. The, the other money which was paid was left to the hijacked officials. And as a result, that money which was uh, given to those NPO, that is 22 million, was used in order to be to benefit some of the executive of the, 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 the NLC. Then still on the NPO 16, we can see that the NPO 16 was also uh, given a grant to the tune of 13 million. And the new information is that the bank statement analysis of the NPO shows that 5.9 million was transferred to a company related to a younger brother of one of the NPO hijacking Kim Ping. What happens is that we identified that there were some Kim Pings, the, the, the people who were hijacking some of the NPO the NPO will make application for funding and they will be rejected. And as a result, these people will resubmit the, the application and subsequently some of this NPO will be approved, but they will change the details of the NPO, reflect new bank account where the money now will go to them. So, so that's how it is. Um, then on this NPO, uh, 600,000 was paid to the conveyancing attorney, which bought a property for the former board member too. Then new information with regard to the NPOs, NPC 17. On the 13th of November, 2017, the NPC applied for funding at the NLC to organize a soccer tournament for Palabora municipality. The grant funding of 4.8 million was approved on 20 November 2017. And the NPC received funding of 4.8 million on the 21st of November 2017. On, on the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, and 27th of November, a total of 3 million was transferred to one consulting engineering entity associated with one of the NLC hijacking kingpins that we have identified. And on the 27th of November, 2017, the entity transferred 2.7 million. And on 28 November, 2017, 250,000 was transferred again to a conveyancing attorney for the purchase of a 27 immovable property for the benefit of a former board member too, 
We're still dealing with board, board member two. And all this NPO, they just reflect the money which was deposited for the purchase of immovable property for this former board member two. Then it should be noted that the identify hijacking P, King Ping and the wife to one of the former executive uh, board, executive of NLC, a director of the NPC and signatory of the NPC bank account. That is the same NPC which was granted money. The, 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 the former executives uh, of NLC wife is a member of that NPC. Then NPC 18, on the 12th of May, 2017, the NPC submitted an application for funding to the NLC to construct a drug rehabilitation center for the community of social movement in Pretoria. The adjudication committee rejected the application submitted by the NPC as it did not meet the minimum requirement. Then on 14 July, 2017, executive of NLC drafted a letter addressed to the chairperson of the NPC informing the NPC that after careful consideration of their appeal, the adjudication committee decided to, to reverse the initial decision and approve an amount of 23.8 million subject to the terms and condition of the enclosed, the, the one enclosed in the agreement. Then NLC and the NPC signed addendum C to the grant agreement on 21st May, 2019. And in the, in the addendum, an, an additional amount of 2.9 was allocated to the NPC. This is the very same NPC which was initially rejected. Then the official, the, the executive wrote to them and say they've reviewed and they are now finding them. NLC paid to the NPC in three tranches. That is the money. The first one was 8.7 million. Then the second one was 7.9. Then the last one was 5 million, which was done on the 25th of January, 2018. And on the 5th of September, 2017, the NPC paid 1 million to an account identified as that of the conveyancing. Remember the conveyancing that we've been talking, money going through for the purchase of the immovable property for a board member two. The SA confirmed that the payment was part of the deposit for the purchase of the property on behalf of a board member two. Then NPO 19, on the 15th of February 2018, the NPO applied for grant funding to NLC for renovation and refurbishment of to Majakane Sports Complex. And on the 22nd of February 2018, application was adjudicated and 15 million was allocated by the adjudication committee. A grant agreement was signed. 5.7 of the payments made to the NPO was paid to an entity linked to NLC senior official. And the entity paid the following amounts to the conveyancing uh, immediately after receiving that 5.7 million from the NPO. And on the 12th of March, 2018, an amount of nine, 900,000 uh, and, and 1 million uh, was paid and also 450,000 was also paid to that conveyancing attorney which was, was paying for the immovable property of the former board member two. Then slides number 26, NPO 22. The NPO applied for funding on or around uh, 19 October, 2018, based on proactive funding. And the purpose of the application was to offer employment or to the local community and training of local farmers. The application was successful and NPO was granted 13 million. Subsequent to the approval of the funding, a grant agreement was signed on 19 November, 2018. And on or around 6 December, 2018, NLC paid the NPO 7 million. And around 20 March, uh, they also paid another 6 million. The NPO transferred 650,000 and 500, a thousand to an entity situated in Pretoria. We know the name of the entity. The entity effected payment of 500,000 to a conveyancing 
on the 12th of December 2018 for the purchase of a furniture and appliance on behalf of the former board member two. The note uh, that the, the, apply, the note on the, uh, for, for the appliance and the furniture was part and parcel of the 27 million property which was purchased on behalf of the former board member two. Then slide number 28, NPO 23. NPO applied for grant, grant funding on uh, 3rd October 2018 through an uh, approved proactive funding proposal for agricultural farming in the free state dated uh, in, in September 2018. The application was successful and a grant agreement was signed in January, uh, granting the NPO an amount of 16 million. The amount was paid into the NPO bank account. First tranche was 12.8 million and the second tranche was 3.2 million, which was done on the 2nd of October, 2019. And on the 1st of February, the NPO transferred 400,000 to a known private entity. On the same day, the entity transferred 35,000 and 50,000 to a conveyancing referred for furniture and appliance for the benefit of former board member two. And on 7 February, 2019, the entity further transferred an amount of 260,000 to the same conveyancing attorney. Now we're dealing with NPO 23, and on 25 uh, January 2019, the other private entity received 2 million from the NPO, that is the NPO 23. The entity paid conveyancing antennae referred to an amount of 14,000 on the uh, 13 February 2019 for the purchase of furniture and appliance for the benefit of former board member two again. Then NPO 24, the NPO applied for funding in around uh, 21st uh, August 2017 to construct an old age home in Dumbe, Zululand, KZN. The application was successful and the grant agreement was signed on the 27th of September 2017, granting the NPO 23 million. An amount was paid in four churches, that is 40 million, for, I mean 20, 000, 20 million, 1 million uh, times three. Then on 11 October 2017, the NPO transferred 5 million to an entity known by SIU. And on 11 October 2017, the NPO further transferred 5 million to another entity known to the SIU. And it should be noted that this money was, was really not used for what it was intended to rather than it being used for what is intended, it's transferred to a different entity. And upon receipt of the money from the NPO, the entity paid or transferred an amount of 4 million on the same day to a conveyancing to, to what's the payment of the property, which is owned by the former board member two. Still NPO 25, which is slide number 33, the NPO also applied for a grant funding on 19 May 2016, the purpose of the application was to approve, uh, was to provide this basic business skills and incubation around Mpumalanga. The application was successful and funded for 1 million, which was paid on the 15th of November 2016. The NPO paid 500,000 to a conveyancing for the purchase of an immovable property of uh, trust where former board member is the sole trustee. The deal was canceled and the money was transferred to the conveyancing who facilitated the sale of 27 million property on the 2nd of November, 2017 on the instruction of former board member two. An entity owned by one of the hijacking kingpin also paid 470,000 to a conveyancing Again, the transaction was canceled and the money to the money to the conveyancy who facilitated the sale of the property to the benefit of the former board member too. So all this present, all this shows money being given to the NPO. And after being given to the NPO, it's either the money is transferred to an entity and the entity transferred the money to the conveyancing attorney for the purchase of the movable property for the former board member too. Then the MPC7, 
The NPC7 also applied for grant funding to NLC and the application was rejected due to non-submission of mandatory documents such as business and project plans. On 15 June 2016, the NPC submitted an appeal and it was determined that the documents were indeed received but were not scanned as they were not uh, labeled properly. And on 23rd August 2016, the application submitted for re-evaluation and it was discovered that the NPC did not submit progress report for other, sub other project funded by NLC, which was done previously. The NPC again submitted an appeal as they alleged that the report was submitted. And on 19 October 2017, a review committee comprising of former board member two accepted the appeal and 5 million grant funding was granted to the NPC. And on 26 October 2017, a grant funding agreement was signed. And on 9 and 11 November 2017, the NPC transferred 1 million and 1.5 million respectively to an entity that has the same directors and bank signatory as that of the NPC. Then on November 2017, the entity and another 350,000 and 300,000 respectively to another entity associated to one of the hijacking kingpins. And in, still in November, the entity in turn transfer 300,000 and 100,000 and another 100,000 respectively to a conveyancing attorney for the purchase of the property on behalf of former board member two. Then, then what happened after we have investigated, we, 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 we launched an application whereby a preservation order and review application was done. And on the 15th of June, 2022, the SIU obtained a preservation order to preserve the property registered under Butanda Investment PTY LTD, where Professor Nevutanda is the sole director. Civil litigation is in the proce process is underway to review and set aside the grant funding contract of all the NPOs and the NPC that contributed towards the sale of the property purchase for the benefits of Prof. We are mentioning it, uh, Chair, because this information is part and parcel of the, it's in the public domain because we have done the application. That's why it's been mentioned. Now, still on former board member two, a vehicle one was purchased on, on behalf of the former board member two. The SIU has identified that during the period, August 2016, the former board member two purchased a a Rolls Royce using fund from the NLC. An invoice dated 30, 31 August 2016 indicated that 6.3 million was invoiced to the former board member two for the above mentioned vehicles. Notification of payments indicate in the origin of the payments made for the purchase of the vehicle. The notification was table, is table in the next slide. You can see here, Chair, that uh, the, 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 this is the notification which was made that and on 18 April 2016, uh, the, the recipient was Daytona PTY LTD, an amount of uh, 100,000, I mean, 1 million was paid. Then 6 May, another million was paid. 10 August 2016, another million was paid. And 1st September 2016, Another uh, 574,000 was paid and 6 September, another 5 million was paid to this uh, Daytona uh, company for the purchase of the, the, the Rolls Royce for the former board member two. And as indicated in the table in the previous slide, payments for the former board member two Rolls Royce were received from entity that has been uh, con contracted by NPOs and also received granting from, NP from, from NLC. A purchase, a property purchase using the NLC fund, the NPO uh, 15. Then here, Chair, we are dealing with the NLC senior executive uh, member. 
The NPO received a grant, in, grant funding of 28 million for the construction of Vafumadi Secondary School in Limpopo. After receiving the first tranche of 20 million in 17 August 2016, the NPO transferred 15 million to the entity that transferred the money for the purchase of the property of former board member two. Then on 31 October 2016, the entity transferred 1 million to the conveyancing and the purpose of the payment was for the purchase of a property on behalf of the family trust. NLC senior official has been identified as a trustee of this trust at the time when the property was purchased. Then the NPO five was hijacked and that the individual that apply for the grant funding are not the legitimate members of the NPO, that is NPO five. And on 16 October, 2017, the NPO received 20 million grant funding from NLC. And on the following day, that is 17 August, 2017, the NPO transferred 5 million to an entity linked to the hijackers. Then the entity transferred 2.2 million to conveyance to the conveyance and attorney on 19 October, 2017 for the purchase of immobile property on behalf of the trust for the NLC senior executive member. During the period in question, the brother and the wife of one senior executive or official of were trustee of the trust. Then on the, on the, the senior exec, as prevented previously, the senior executive of NLC was involved in a number of business activity. Then two disciplinary referrals were submitted to NLC and the NPA referrals were, were done. A pension of the former senior executive has been preserved based on some of the money that he has received from the NPO and NPC that received granting from NLC. Then as presented previously, you can see that these are some of the, 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 the company that receive money from the NPO, that receive granting from NLC, and those company paid money to, to one of the trusts that is related to one of the senior executive of NLC. These are the amount that has been deposited into the account of the trust that is owned by the, by the NLC executive. Then also from the trust, the trust that is owned by the, the, the executive of NLC, the money moved from the trust uh, fund and it went to the private account of the senior executive of NLC. And these are some of the money that we managed to trace coming from the trust uh, from, that is owned by the executive of NLC that you can see that there's 240,000, there's 1.2 million, and there's a money that was used to purchase the restaurant. And there's also money which was deposited into different accounts and also to another different companies. Then we can see that the money, the money in the next slide that, let's go to the next slide. You can see that these are the money that has been also transferred into the, 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 the senior executive of NLC. And all this money are coming from private, from, from coming from the NPO and NPC that receive money from NLC. And the total money there is 34.8 million at the bottom. Then information, this information also was presented previously. We just uh, take a snapshot of some of the money that came from the, the, those NPO to, into the trust and also to the NEC member. You can see that in 19 May, 303,500 was used for the payment of the school fees and 830 was used for the maths lessons and 100,000 was, was deposited into the bank account of the official and, and 1.6 million was used for the travel, was paid to the travel agency 
of the officials' brothers, and another 200,000 was paid to the family trust, and 101,000 was paid for, to the officials' company, and 1.5 million was used for purchasing or for farming business, and 50,000 was paid from to, to the ofi officials' family trust. This is how the money flow from the NPO, then to the family trust, from the family trust, then it goes to the, to the members uh, of the executive of NLC's bank, private bank account. Then settlement of vehicles used in the NLC funds. NPO 14 submitted application for grant funding to the NLC and NPO 14 was hijacked by several members known to SIU and they submitted an application for granting on the 5th of September, 2017. And the NLC granted NPO 14 a funding of 23 million. Then it should be noted that the hijack letter applied for grant funding of 20 million, but NLC approved a further funding and allocated to the NPO 23 million. And on 23rd October 2017, the NLC paid that 20 million to the NPO. And on 14 February, 1 million was paid. And also on March, another million was paid to the NPO. And the last million was paid on the 13th of March to the same NPO. And NLC later paid an additional 3.8 million to the same NPO that is hijacked. Remember, this NPO applied for 20 million, NLC approved 23 million, and on, on top of that, NLC paid another 3.8 million on top of that. Then on 18 June 2019, the NPO transferred 1 million to an entity linked to one of the hijacking kingpins. And on the same day, 330,000 was paid from the above mentioned entity to BMW Financial Service towards a balloon payment for a vehicle purchase by the senior executive of NLC. Then senior executive uh, number two using NLC fund. We are done with NLC senior executive one, now we're on senior executive uh, two. The investigation has revealed that the NPO 15 received a grant funding from NLC to the tune of 28 million for the construction of the Vafamadi Va Secondary School in Nipopo. And on 17 August 2016, the NPO received the first tranche of 20 million. And on 29 August, the another four, 4 million was transferred. Then another 2 million was transferred also to, to then two million was another two million was transferred to an entity linked to the same official. Then former board member one was appointed. Now we are dealing with the former board member one. We have dealt with the former board member two. We have far done with the four with the former senior executive two one. Now we are dealing with the former board member one, who also benefited from NLC. And this former, former board member one was also appointed as a non-executive member at NLC. We did present it previously. And this former board member one, he also part of the, the Kim Ping that hijacked the NPO one, which received 23 million from the, N, from the NLC. And this former board member one also uh, he received another 5 million of the 23 million, which was given to, to, of the money which was given to the NPO one. Then as we go on, we can see that the, the very same former board member one, uh, the, he, with regard to the NPO two, he received close to 7.5 million out of the NPO2 that received money from NLC. Then the very same uh, board member one, also he received uh, 7.5 million out of the NPC one, which also received money from, from the NLC. 
So this is the information that has been presented previously. I'm just trying to summarize. Then the 3.4 million was transferred to bank account of the company owned by the brother of the senior official of NLC. And on the following day, uh, the same, co same company transferred 1 million to the former board member one's bank account. The construction of the drug rehabilitation was still ongoing when the SIU visited the center in November 2021. Uh, but by that time, the money has already been depleted. Then still on the former board member one, uh, the former board member one also received money which was given to the NPO3. And it has been determined that NPO3 received a grant funding to the chain of 8.8 .8 million in 2015. Then out of that 8 million, 2 million was paid 5.4 million, which was paid to the, to, to the former board member two, was paid into the personal bank account of the former board member one, meaning that former board member one also purchased a house with using the money which was received by the NPO from, from NLC. Then during uh, the 2015 and 2018, NPO four received three NLC grant to the value of 6.4 million and NPO4 transferred the 1.4 million to one known company. And on uh, April, the known company transferred 1.9 million to one former board member's personal bank ac bond account also. So this slide 64, uh, depict summary of the NPO where board members and executive were involved. You can see the NPC one, 7.5 million grant funding was received. Then we've got NPC, NPO three, where 8 million grant was given. And we've got NPO two, where 27 million grant was given. And we've got NPO one, where 23 million grant was funding was given. And out of that, we can see it in the center that former board member one received, benefited from all this NPO that received money from, from NLC. Then this slide also shows summary of NPO where board member and executive were involved. You can see in the middle that this is a former board member too. And all in the circle, it shows the money that the NPO received together with the money that has been transferred to the board member two. This is how we had benefited. You can see NPO eight there, but 55 million was given to the NPO, NPO eight, and out of it, the former board member two benefited out of it. NPC seven, five million was given to and the former board member did uh, benefit out of it. And all the benefit that they receive has been outlined in the previous presentation that I presented. But this is just to depict, to show the number of NPO and NPC that contributed towards former board member two. Then slide number 66, also is the summary of NPO where board member and executive were involved. Here you can see in the middle, now we are focusing on the senior executive and these are the NPO and NPC that contributed towards senior executive uh, of the NLC. You can see NPO five, the 20 million the grant they receive and out of it, there's a portion that they've contributed towards the senior executive. NPO 15 received 28 million grant and they also contributed to the senior executive. And NPO 13 received 20 million, NP NPC received 5.5 million, NPO 14 received 23 million. All of them had contributed towards the, the senior executive of our NLC. And remember, we've got senior executive one and senior executive two that benefited out of all this grant funding. And mostly they were involved in the approval of all this funding to all this NPO and on NP, NPC. Then also still the uh, slide number 67 depict 
NPO where board member and executive were involved. You can see NPO 15 there, 15 there, 28 million grant funding was, was, was received. And out of that, former NLC senior executive two received benefit out of that 28 million. So we have depicted it in our presentation just to, to, to dissect to show how much each executive received out of the funding. Then in terms of the new information, Credo Mutua project was a proactive funded project to build a museum and a library in honor of Credo Mutua in Gurumani, Northern Cape. NPO 13 received 22 million in two trenches, that is 12 million and 10 million. The chairperson of the NPO told the SIU that he received a call from a gentleman who, who informed him that he works with the NLC and that he was aware that NPO received a, a construction grant from NLC. He informed him that certain entity associated with NLC senior official should be given the construction part of the contract. So what happened, the modus operandi is that they will, the NLC executive or official, they will grant the NPO the money to say you must construct either the rehabilitation or whatever. And as a result, they will instruct them that you must appoint this company. And you find that their company disappointed, it's either linked to the official or to the board member or to the official of NLC. That's how the money, the benefit was transferred to them. That's what exactly what happened in this, uh, this NPO. Then the chairperson of the NPO is fra, from the area where the NLC official come from. The SIU has identified that the NPO paid an amount of 1.5 million to a construction company responsible for building the house of the NLC official in Pretoria. Criminal referrals has been submitted to NPA and several process to recover the property is underway. The official resigned before the SIU submit the disciplinary referrals to NLC. But as indicated here, as much as the official resigned, we did submit the criminal referrals to NPA and we will be recovering all the money that this official received. Then purchase of a property RF1194 Peach Street uh, on 5th September 2017, NPO 7 submitted application for grant funding to NLC for the purpose of construction of an all age home facility in Moila village in Limpopo. The NLC approved the application for the grant funding to the amount of 22.5 million. Then on 13 October 2017, that is eight days after receiving payments from NLC, the NPO transferred 3.3 million to a known entity. The hijacking pin has been identified as the sole director of the said entity that received 3.3 million. And on 23 October 2017, the entity transferred 830,000 in two trenches to a conveyancing for the purchase of a property on behalf of the hijacking campaign. And on 20 October 2017, 300,000 were transferred from the entity to the conveyancing administrative uh, administrators of estate. The transfer went towards the purchase of another property on behalf of the campaign. The purchase price for the property was 980,000. And NPO 15 applied for a funding from NLC on July 2016 for an amount of 25 million. The grant was for the construction of the school in Mashau village in Limpopo. And on 17 August 2016, NLC paid an amount of 25 million to their account. And on 23 August, the NP, NPO 15 transfer 15 million to a known private company in two, in two trenches, which is 14 million and 1 million. You can see that the money is transferred to a private company and is not used for the construction of a school. Then the NPO, as indicated, uh, NPO one, uh, the money was transferred. Then 
we can see that referrals for former board member one has been referred to the national prosecuting for the prosecution and civil litigation to preserve property that was used, uh, that property that was purchased using the money that was received from the NPO one is underway where we will be getting that property. And also here, this the all information that we presented based on the financial uh, investigation regarding the NPO one. Then here we can see that the in October 2017 NPO transfer amount of five million to an attorney for the purchase of the property, which is owned by the former NLC board member one. So an almost 5.7, 5.4 million was paid from different company that received money from the NPO, including the NPO one. The construction of the old age, which was meant to be done by the NPO one, uh, commenced but remained unfinished to this date because the money was not used what, for what it was intended for. Then referrals for two individuals has been made to the National Prosecuting Authority, particularly based on the NPO2 and civil litigation to set aside the grant award and preserve the property is also ongoing because we discovered that the money was not used for what it was intended for, particularly in relation to the NPO2. Still under the NPOs, NPO2, yeah, it just outlined how much the, the NPO2 received 5 million and few building blocks were constructed in existing drug rehabilitation in Houting. The newly constructed structure are in poor quality and there is no value for money for that 27.5 million, which was given to NPO2. And remember that we are busy in the process of trying to set aside all this grant funding and to recover the money. And also in uh, this slide 77 outlined the financial analysis that we have uh, presented previously for the NPO2 regarding the 27.5 million that was paid then. And as you can see that out of that 27.5 million, 10 million was paid to one known individual's personal account 3.1 million was paid on the, on the same individual's law firm, and 3.5 million was paid to the company owned by the brother to one of the senior officials of NLC. And NPO2 bank statement revealed that two amount of 264,000 and 271,000 were used for the purchase of two food outlets franchise owned uh, by the known individual. And also here, it is still analysis of the bank statement for NPO2, where the bank statement further revealed that 5 million was transferred to one attorney for the purchase of 11 million farm. And it has also been determined that 200,000 was paid from the NPO2 bank account for the purchase of the vehicle. This just show how the money was uh, siphoned out of NLC into the NPO, rather than using the money for what it's intended, it purchase farm, purchase houses, purchase uh, uh, vehicles. Then on NPO six, the new update is that SIU has obtained a preservation order against the properties purchased through the NLC fund. An application is being drafted to review and set aside the grant funding contract for the money which has been paid to, to NPO6. We can see that the, the application was close to 15 million, which was approved, and, and, and the money was misused. The project only started when NLC grant uh, funding uh, of further 4.2 million was paid to the NPO. The first 15 million was then used. They only started using the money for a project when NLC approved another 4.2 million. 
Uh, NPO6 still ongoing on between 7 April and 2018 and 23 July 2018, a total amount of 110,000 was paid for car repairs and deposit for a vehicle on behalf of an individual known to the SIU. And on March 2018, the same individual purchased a vehicle to the value of 205,000 using the fund received from NLC. 58,000 was paid for a center known to the SIU on 30 March 2018. That is the money out of the NPO six. 635,000 was paid to a businessman known to the SIU and 2.2 million was paid to service a loan that the member had and 182,000 was paid to the personal bank account of an individual mentioned above, and 2.1 million was paid to the entity, other bank account held at a known bank uh, institution, and 806,000 was used to purchase an IT software. Then on the NPO 8, the new information is that referrals to, is to be submitted to the National Prosecuting, or referral is to be submitted to the National Prosecuting Authority, that is a criminal referral in relation to NPO 8, and civil litigation to recover the, 100, recover the 10 million that was freely given to the company linked to the NLC official and the house bought using the NLC funds by NPO chairperson is also underway. This is NPO 8, which we presented previously. We can see that they receive a funding to the tune of 55.2 million. And here also, the, as indicated, the civil litigation is underway just to recover the money that was uh, given to this NPO. You can see here the financial investigation breakdown of what the money was used. You can see there that 2.6 was used to purchase a property and 1 million was transferred to a call account of the known entity. 2.2 million was transferred to another known entity and 341,000 was used uh, to purchase a second hand, I think second hand vehicle. So this is the breakdown in terms of the money which was given to NPO 8, how they use the money. And still go on with regard to value for money, with regard to the 55 million, which was given to the NPO, 200 borehole in five different provinces were drilled and equipped with two, uh, equipped by two private company. One entity received 10 million for doing the work, for doing no work at all in terms of that 55 million, which was given to this NPO. And with regard to the NPC2 referral for one individual has been made to the National Prosecuting Authority so that they should take action against the members that receive the money in relation to the NPC2. Then NPC2 still going on with regard to the finding that we have made out of the NPC2. Then you can see here the financial analysis with regard to how the money came into NPC2 and what was it used for. Then you can see that the money was transferred to companies or entity owned by individuals or close friends to the owner of the NPC2, the official of NLC, and 3.2 million was transferred to one entity linked to the known individual. 1.7 was transferred to an investment entity. 1 million was transferred to the trust account owned by the senior official of NLC and his family. This is the breakdown of how the money was used to utilize a transfer from the NPC2. This is just still carrying on with regard to the breakdown as to how the money was, was, was transferred to, 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 from the NPC. You can see here the big one, 1.5 million 
was transferred to the senior official of NLC family company and 500,000 went to the company of the wife of the senior official of NLC. And with regard to the NPC 11, which was hijacked by non-individual, then we can go to the financial breakdown, slide number 91, financial uh, analysis of the money that went to NPO 11. You can see that 1.7 million and 500,000 were transferred to two entities owned by one of the known NPO hijackers. 1.6 million were transferred to one of the NPO hijacking a key role player and close Ali to the senior official of NLC. The entire amount was ultimately transferred to the entity linked to the family of the senior official of NLC. The entire grant was embezzled and no work was done at all with regard to the NPO 11. Then NPO 5, we can see that we have made disciplinary referrals for NLC senior official, was submitted to NLC for receiving a kickbacks in a form of a property. The official resigned before the disciplinary hearing could take place. There you can see how the money went through the NPO. They applied for a fund for a grant and they were approved 23 million. And financial analysis of the grant, you can see there that in October 2017, Amount totally 11.7 million are transferred to the from NPO's bank account to a business account of private company. And between October between 19 and 27 October, the owner of the private company to transfer an amount of 9.2 million to a bank account of a conveyancing attorney for the purchase of the 27 million immobile property benefit from NLC former board member two. The old age home construction that was started remain unfinished to this day, whereas the money was paid to this NPO. And NPO seven, you can see also there that they also applied for grant funding. As indicated previously, they were granted 20 million and as a regard, you can see that the, the legitimate member of the NPO became aware that NLC paid a grant to the value of 22 million. Then they approached NLC. Then NLC had a meeting with the legitimate member of the NPO and the hijackers. As a result, instead of an NLC executive to inform the hijackers to return the money, they further approved Further funding to the NPO to say, yes, another money, keep quiet, leave these people to go around uh, with the 22 million that we have given to them. And they were quite aware that this 22 million was hijacked, the NPO was hijacked. So they didn't do anything out of it. They decided to approve further funding to this same NPO. And this is just to, to outline how the money was, was embezzled out of that 22 million. Then NPO 13, we can see that referrals for four individuals has been made to the National Prosecuting Authority for criminal referrals so that they must take action against that official. And civil litigation to set aside and to recover the money is underway in regard to NPO 13. And you can see that the NPO 13 received 20.1 million in two tranches, that is 10 million and 10.1 million. And you can see that uh, the company appointed uh, for, the, for, for the construction of the, the NPO 13, uh, that is for the museum, the construction company was owned by Cousin of one senior NLC official. An engineering company was owned by the brother of the senior NLC official. And company B was owned by the wife of the senior official. And the biggest chunk of the grant went to the above mentioned company. I think it's gonna, it's gonna it, it, it just showed that as indicated that they will grant the, 
the fund to the NPO. As a result, they will instruct the NPO that you must appoint this construction company, you must appoint this engineering company, and you must appoint this other company. As a result, the money comes back to the official, but using this very same company that they've instructed that those NPO to utilize. So it's still carry on with regard to the NPO 13, with regard to the breakdown of the money. You see here value for money, the project was completed, but the building structure does not correlate with the money paid to the NPO 13 by NLC. The SIU is in the process of acquiring service of a quantity surveyor to determine uh, the value for money, to look at the money that has been paid in relation to the structure to see whether this is their correlation. But based on the observation, we can see that the money that has been paid is quite more than the structure that we can see down there. Then with regard to NPO 14, also referral to NPA, National Prosecuting Authority is to be submitted by the 30th of October and civil litigation to set aside the grant is also underway, whereby we will be getting the money, the 23 million that is being awarded to the NPO 14. This is uh, just carrying on, just also to emphasize the, the, the point that I was making that they will instruct the company, the NPO that you must appoint so and so. You can see in, with regard to this NPO, construction company for this old age was the, the construction company was owned by a cousin to the NLC official engineering company still owned by the by one of the brother to the senior official of NLC and company B also owned by the wife of this uh, senior official of NLC. This is how the model operandi was, was, was carried out. And here value for money for NPO 14, you can see that the hijackers abandoned the project at the exception stage. Uh, they vanish with the 20 million paid by NLC. The project restarted only after further funding by NLC was granted. Despite this, the project remained unfinished. That is in relation to NPO 14. Then NPO 19, you can see also there in terms of the financial analysis that uh, they were given 15 million grant funding. And if we can see that the 6.6 .6 million was transferred to the hijackers law firm. Uh, this hijacker owned a law firm. Then NPO, in terms now, we will be discussing some of the matters that we dealt with in terms of phase two investigation that is currently underway. Then here we can see NPO 20. On the 3rd of July, 2018, the NPO submitted application for grant funding at NLC for sports and recreation for an amount of 17.7 million. The application was adjudicated by an NLC member on 18 July, 2018. The grant agreement of 17.7 million was signed between NLC and the NPO. Then the SIU interviewed one member of the NPO appearing in the application form. The member indicated that he was never involved in any nonprofit activity of the said NPO or any other NPO. He further indicated that he gave one of the hijacking Kimping his identity document. The Kimping informed him that he will assist in finding a job for him. He was not aware that his identity document was used in an application submitted to the NLC for funding. The NLC paid the NPO in two trenches, that is 14.2 million, and then the second, and, and the other second trench was also paid on the 13th of January 2019. NPO 21, the NPO was granted funding by NLC to host a diamond and during festivals, which was an, an annual event in Kimberley that took place in April 2017. The festival showcased local arts talent and skills and promote local product in Solplachi community. Solplachi municipality went out on a tender for service provider for the Diamond Doring Festival. The SIU, SIU has interviewed a representative of Solplachi municipality 
who indicated that the municipality has no relation with the NPO and that the festival was owned and funded by the municipality. An analysis bank statement of the NPO indicated that the grant funding received from the NLC was transferred to individual or entity as follow. Entity owned by the hijacking kingpin, you can see that 678,000 was paid to them. And also entity owned by the hijacking pin, again further 520 million, 520,000 was paid. And the trust affiliated to the NLC senior official, 500,000, NPO 15 received 19,000, and a wife to the NLC official received 40,000. Service provider hired by the municipality to host the event, they only received 1,000. Then NPC4, it was established that in March 2011, the, the, the NPC4 was established. The purpose of the NPC was to impact skills in the following, that is music, business, video, film production, dance, and overall business of radio. And in April 2013, the NPC submitted the application for grant funding for arts, culture, and national heritage for an amount of 18.6 million. The purpose of the application was to assist youth, especially the unemployed ones in poor and rural area of the country to impact skill on music, business, video, and film and production, dance, and overall business in the radio. Then on November 2018, distribution agency committee issued the, uh, the special instruction or condition where the applicant where the applicant were invited to do presentation on the project and in March 2014 uh, the DA issued the special instruction uh, wherein the applicant were requested to submit a revised detailed budget of 9.3 million for the project the project, budget should cover all the nine provinces. Uh, the, the instruction that was that the project should cover all the nine projects, nine provinces. The application by the NPC4 was again adjudicated by NLC member and signed on 7 June 2014 for an amount of 9.3 million. The agreement uh, between NLC, the NPC4 was signed in 12 September 2014. NLC paid in two tranches, that is 4.6 uh, million, and we didn't indicate amount there, but the, the, the second tranches was 4.6 million, which was paid on, on uh, 13 November 2015. So on this one, the investigation is still ongoing. We're still doing the analysis just to try and find out what happened to the money. NPC 5 and NPC uh, six CC were registered in 2015. The member of both companies are linked to one NLC hijacking campaign. The NPC submitted the application to NLC the same day, that is October 2018. The NPC 5 applied to assist with social hygiene in Limpopo province. Then NPC 6 submitted the application for the same scope of work in the Eastern Cape province. NLC adjudication committee adjudicated the application on the same day, that is 1st November 2018. Then NPC 5 was paid 7 million and the NPC 6 was paid 10 million. In terms of the financial analysis of the NPC uh, 5, uh, in November 2018, NLC made a payment of 7 million to the bank account of the NPC. Then on 3 December 2018, 500,000 was paid from the NPC to the bank account of conveyancing attorney that facilitated the purchase of a property on behalf of the former board member two. And the matter is still under investigation in relation to this NPC uh, five. Then with regard to the NPC six, between uh, 14 December 2018 and 3 June 2019, 265,000 was paid from the NPC account to the hijacking kingpin. Then total value, then with regard to this also the NPC, the investigation is still ongoing where we are analyzing to see 
how did they spend the 10 million which was allocated to them? Then the total value of matters under investigation pertaining to phase one of the investigation, the, it's, it's 279 million. And the investigation in relation to this focus area, which is phase one is done. The interim report is to be submitted to the presidency on the 31st of October, 2022. As indicated chair during our last meeting, we were supposed to have submitted the interim report. But as we are doing the investigation, you will see as I presented that most of this NPO, they are interlinked to one another. As a result, we decided to say, let's finish all the investigation pertaining to phase one with all the entities that are interlinked to each other so that when we submit the report, we submit a complete report that deal with all the activity pertaining to those NPO. As a result, we can indicate now that phase one is done and currently the report is underway. We are reviewing it whereby we anticipate that by the 31st of October, it will be submitted to the president. And with regard to phase two, as indicated, the value of metals pertaining to phase two is 246 million. And here we anticipate that an investigation will be finalized by the 31st of March, 2023. And with regard to phase three, the value of metals for phase three is 905 million, 905 million of which this phase will only start on the 1st of April. And, but currently we're still receiving some of the allegations that are coming in. And as indicated, they are close to 30 something matters that relates to phase three. And when we equate all the amount, we can see that the total, total amount amount to over 1.4 billion of investigation of all the matters, the NPO that receive money from, from the NLC. So the investigation is ongoing with regard to will be, it's ongoing with regard to all those matters. Phase one is done, phase two is underway. We'll be finalizing it on the 31st of March, 2023. Then with regard to the outcome chair, we have referred for disciplinary action. I've mentioned some of this method through when we are busy uh, presenting pertaining to some of those matters, but you can see there that a disciplinary referral letter was dated 13 August, was submitted to the Minister of Trade and Industry for former board member one. By that time, former board member one was still a board member, but based on the strength of evidence against him, the former board member tendered his resignation before disciplinary hearing can be effected. Then SIU also submitted disciplinary referral letter to NLC dated 27 August, 2021, against one NLC senior official that is an executive Disciplinary hearing was conducted on the 17th of January, 2022. This of senior official was acquitted on the initial charge. Then the SIU resubmitted further DC referral and he was subsequently charged and he resigned before the hearing could take place. This one is in relation to one senior executive. And also number three, SIU was in the process of submitting a disciplinary referral to the NLC board against the former one senior executive, that is senior executive number two, but the executive tendered a resignation with immediate effect immediately after the SIU called the executive for questioning. Then SIU refer evidence pointing to the commission of criminal offense to the National Prosecuting Authority in relation for 13 individual, we can see there that there's a former board member. With regard to NPO, there are two individual, NPO 13, four individual, NPO 15, there are four individual, former NLC executive two, and also to the MPC two, there's one individual that we have referred to NPA. And other, other criminal referrals are also under review by legals where we will be referring some of those to the, the NPA. And with regard to preservation order, as indicated on the 15th of June, 2022, SIU obtained a preservation order to preserve the property registered under a Vutanda investment where Professor Novutanda is the sole director, 
civil litigation process is underway to receive, to review and set aside the grant funding contracts of all the NPO and NPC that contributed towards the sale or the property purchase for the benefits of the prof. Then I, I, in, I added this one, it's highlighted in red because it's another information that we've added when we, when we, when we have already submitted the presentation in Naba Yokulinda two, uh, and two others. That's the case number there. And on the 9th of February, 2022, preservation order was granted, was granted. And on the 3rd of June, uh, 2022, reconsideration application judgment was reserved with regard to this matter. Then there are further eight properties identified for preservation and the process of preserving them is at an advanced stage where it will happen very soon regarding some of this property that has been purchased using the, the NLC, the grant. Then I will end here and hand over to Advocate Motivi to finalize in terms of the outstanding aspect. Thank you, Chair. Oh, Mr. Thank Mbappe, you very thanks. much. Uh, Advocate Mutibi, if you can then just um, conclude. Yes. I Thank note, you. Honorable Cuthbert, your hand, but I won't be taking questions now. Can we allow uh, Honorable, uh, sorry, Advocate Mutibi to uh, conclude the presentation of the SIU? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Honorable Chair. Uh, I uh, appreciate that. Uh, Honorable Chef, as you can see, when I opened that, this has been quite a, an intense and very complex uh, investigation. The investigators under Mr. Lacheto and Mr. Mashudu, they've really uh, followed on an effective investigative methodology, as you can see. We have used trace methods and technology that led us to all this monies that we have traced. This investigation also uh, entailed meticulous analysis of bank accounts and payment processes uh, from various banks. And we traced which accounts benefited and which ones uh, benefited corruptly. The financial analysis and ultimately identify those who corruptly benefited, as I said. Um, as, we, as we always uh, do, and these matters will now be presented in all the forums where there's consequence management now, whether it's in the civil litigation process, whether it's in the disciplinary process, whether it's in the criminal uh, prosecution stage, we, have, we are satisfied that the evidence we've gathered will stand uh, judicial scrutiny or administrative scrutiny. Now, this slide that you're seeing, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, really just indicates to the, to the Honorable Committee that the investigation has uh, uh, identified, has identified the, the methods, the methods through which these corrupt uh, individuals use to siphon money. So this, uh, uh, the, the, the so-called modus operandi uh, used in siphoning the money, you will see and you will, you will have picked it up during the investigation. Misuse of proactive funding provision uh, in the NLC Act, and uh, uh, we've indicated that to the NLC that that process needs to be reviewed. We have also identified this inadequate project management, uh, lack of monitoring and evaluation of those projects to ensure that they achieve the intended uh, uh, objective. We've also picked up collusion between NLC officials and NPOs and NPCs, collusion between some board members and NPOs and NPCs. There is just general abuse of uh, NPOs and NPCs, including hijackings thereof. Honorable Chair, we've also identified that there's probably ineffective or actually absence of auditing of this project. And of course, just general maladministration in the approval of grants. And of course, also the use of trust and family members to defraud uh, the, the, the NLC. 
as, as, as you would have seen, there's also abuse of uh, uh, firms of attorneys uh, for this purpose. We will, we will be in interacting with the Legal Practice Council, as I mentioned when, when, when we started. As the Honorable Minister indicated, you can see that this is an organized syndicate meant to really siphon money from, from NLC. There's also a widespread misrepresentation amounting to fraud. And in that case, we, we identify it and we refer to uh, criminal prosecution. The Honorable Ministers indicated that this is the time now to pierce the veil and go in to ensure that those who are responsible are held to account. The next slide indicates, as I said, that there are several recommendations that we will do to NLC so that the system can be improved. This is really just the summary of some of those. Um, we, as we indicated, the process of dealing with uh, uh, proactive uh, funding uh, we have really uh, indicated that it, it needs to be reviewed so that uh, the risks in there should be uh, eliminated. All current proactive funding uh, projects should be captured in the grant management system uh, so that the system is designed in a manner that uh, is, uh, is unable at the moment. The system does not detect different applications for grant funding. We have then uh, recommended uh, the issue around uh, integrated uh, uh, system. Um, the next slide, please. Right, um, there, there's also just an observation, which is the recommendation that uh, the NLC system should be linked to the Department of Social uh, Development, which is the authority dealing with NPOs and NPCs. In this way, you'll be able to track uh, some of this uh, uh, irregularities between, between the two entities. Project management, uh, monitoring and evaluation to be done for all funded projects. Uh, and again, the, the, the third bullet point is around policy of transferring money to NPOs and tranches and so on. So various policies need to be, to be uh, uh, reviewed. We also saying lifestyle audits uh, to be conducted uh, in, the, in, in the institution. Uh, and this would be a proactive measure to ensure that uh, you know, we detect uh, some of these uh, possible uh, uh, irregularities or possible uh, 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 inst instances uh, where there would have been uh, corruption and so on. Uh, the issue around segregation of duties, this is some of the recommendations we have made, because you will see that uh, uh, the abuse of the process just suggests that there are no checkpoints in terms of where approvals are made and no effective segregation of duties. Again, as we said, the public benefit tracking, uh, this, this, this is uh, non-existent at the moment, where projects are just left uh, not concluded, but the money has been paid, and in that way, uh, the public that these funds are meant for do not get the benefit. Honorable Chair, that's the end of the presentation. We really thank the Honorable Committee for the opportunity. Uh, we are available now to take any questions that the Honorable Committee members may have. Thank you very much, Advocate Mutibi, uh, for the good work you have done so far. And we note the extensive work that is still left before this task is completed, but we ask you not to tire. The, the race must be run to the end in the interest of South Africans. Um, before we hand over to the minister, I want to um, indicate to the portfolio committee that we will move the question sessions to the end. Once we've heard from the department, uh, through the minister once we've heard from the NLC, so that when we have the question sessions, it encompasses all three of those areas. So at this stage, we want to um, pause uh, and uh, resume. We have, we're having a tea break now or body break, and we'll resume our meeting um, at um, 
Let's make it at um, 11.15. I note all the hands. I'm going to write them all down in the order in which they came up. And we will then go into um, our break for now. Thank you very much.